Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. In a way, Donald Trump has made it easier because when he tells you he'll be a dictator for a day, we all know that dictators don't resign after a day. When he uses the word bloodbath, yes, it was in the context of an automobile industry speech, but he knew exactly what he was saying. When he talks about suspending the Constitution or migrants as animals, you know, this is him. He's telling you what his choice is. So you were asking, Mika, is there any precedent for this? No.
trust in the US media is at historic lows and it's because of hysteria like this. Here are just some of the headlines spruiking the lie that Donald Trump has declared there will be a bloodbath if he loses the next election. New York Times even suggested this signals a doomsday vision of the United States. But listen to what he actually said and what he was referring to. He's being very specific. Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years 34% of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole, that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. He was talking about cars, the car industry, a bloodbath in the car industry, not a bloodbath in the streets if he's not elected. Joining me now is the host of Prime Time with Alex Stein, the man himself, Alex Stein. Alex, I remember the riots and destruction when Trump was elected in 2016. His inauguration in 2017 saw massive violent protests, but we're supposed to pretend January 6 was the worst violence that DC has seen and, and that he's threatening literal bloodshed. Well, Rita, obviously they want to try to spin this and make Donald Trump seem like a villain, which is, you know, all the media ever does. but. And a serious note, you look at Detroit, Michigan was an iconic city, and when it lost its automotive manufacturing, it totally failed. And Donald Trump is being very honest when he says that if we lose our automotive manufacturing in America, we're gonna crumble just like Detroit. So he was just using the dictionary definition, talking about a financial issue and using it in a financial way, not a physical blood violent way like the media wants to spin it. were also spreading more disinformation claiming that Trump called migrants not human, not people. You can see the headlines again, everyone from a Daily Mail to the New York Times. But again, let's listen to what he actually said. If I had prisons that were teeming with MS-13 and all sorts of people that they've got to take care of for the next 50 years, right? Young people, they're in jail for Years, if you call them people, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. But I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say. They say you have to vote against him because did you hear what he said about humanity? I've seen the humanity and these humanity, these are bad. These are animals, OK? And we have to stop it. We can't have another Lakin. Alex, he's talking about MS-13 gangbangers who are in prison, and yet the media claims in just about every headline we're looking at that uh, Trump said migrants are not people. Clearly, they are terrified of the recent polls showing Trump is winning huge numbers of migrants, uh, including the majority of Hispanics, according to a recent New York Times poll. Well, Rita, the reason why this immigration issue is such a big deal is because the cartel is sending criminals up here. I mean, some people are sure they're probably coming here for a better life, but the majority of people are paid by coyotes to be smuggled across, sex traffickers and drug traffickers. And when they get caught, Rita, they don't have to face the same judicial system that I would as an American citizen. They get to go to ICE, Immigration, Customs and Enforcement, and go right back to Mexico. So we have a two-tier justice system that doesn't prosecute illegal immigrants the same as they do as American citizens. So everything Donald Trump Trump is saying is just based in fact, but the media wants to cover that up and not live in reality and wants to live in some world where American can just solve all the crises in South America, which is not the truth. And then if you just saw, we just had a Hezbollah terrorist just come up through the border saying that he wants to go to New York and make bombs. So this isn't just a, 
uh, Venezuelans or South Americans coming to America for a, a better life. This is a controlled demolition of American greatness. And it, and it starts really at the border.